I've given you this evolution operator in finite time. So in other subjects, this is called a Green's function of the problem. You take some function, you multiply it by something, or convolve with a kernel, and you get something. So that's finite time. But what about infinitesimal time? You know, here what happens, we pick up Jacobian, but what happens if you look at a very short time? So evolution, and that I find surprising, actually. For time going to zero, you know, very small times. So if you look at short time interval, so I integrate, I have delta y minus short time evolution. And we know what the short time evolution looks like. This is evolution just integral over the velocity. So this is x plus delta tau velocity of x. That's just linearization of trajectory. This is velocity and a little time you produce the length in this way. That's a delta function, so you can integrate. And what I pick up is the determinant t, and then I pick up dv dx. This is a matrix, and this one, you remember, this is the matrix of velocity gradients times delta t. And it's absolute value, but it doesn't matter because it's of order one anyhow for small volumes. Delta at, and now the y minus y. I'm allowed to the leading order to change it, being evaluated at the end point rather than the real point. Now, I can expand the delta function also in a series. So this becomes a delta y, doing a Taylor series expansion on this, gradient of density. Sorry, that was, my notes have arrows I can see. And whenever I have a determinant which has small elements, to leading order in small elements, this is a trace. So this is 1 plus delta t, the trace of whatever is here. But trace of the matrix is the gradient, because this is i, j. If I identify them, then that's just the gradient of the velocity. And I get that infinitesimal evolution which is density evaluated at x or at y at time t is the density evaluated at time zero. And then I pick up just the leading terms in delta tau, which is minus delta tau gradient v summing on the indices, and I call everything x now. Leading order, this is all fine. Now I put this on the left-hand side, and what do I get? I get a difference divided by the tau. This is the partial d of rho. You know, zero, but it could be any other time. And then I put this on this side, and I get minus uh, the gradient, this guy here times velocity times rho equals zero. So this is kind of cute. This is just continuity equation. You know, so we found it intuitive to think first of the finite time evolution. But whenever you have a finite time evolution, there should be also differential formulation of finite time evolution. The finite time evolution was all embodying the principle that trajectories are not destroyed or created. So the only thing that can change is their density. They themselves are immutable. But infinitesimal time, that's statement of continuity. So you know, it's a thing that you derive in zillion ways, co-moving derivative, etc. The full derivative of something that is preserving mass is zero. If you write in terms of partials, you get that the change of the density is divergence of the current from the infinitesimal volume, thing you've seen a thousand times. 
So that's what Perron Frobenius operator is in infinitesimal formulation. It just says that the density function satisfies this equation. What else can we say about these operators? Because they are just this delta function, it's easy to check that they form a semi-group. And this semi, it's a cautious thing. Uh, for finite dimension differential system, it's actually group. You can go backward and forward, you can define. But uh, in, for partial differential equations, etc., you can only go forward in time, you can reverse. So that's a cautious, just being cautious, saying this. And they have a property that for infinitesimal time, it says nothing happened, so this is just an identity. It just says the delta function, nothing changed. And if you apply two of them, so you first go time t prime and then you go time t, this is the same as t plus t prime. And that you'll check by putting it into the definition and integrating our delta functions. And then you'll find out that, you know, because the times add up on trajectories, they'll add up on these things. And now we can also define an infinitesimal so generator. We can write, uh, I'll use some curly A. So curly A acting on X, you know, is a limit of delta T, delta T going to zero plus of so positive increment in time arbitrarily small. But we have just computed this in what I've erased is minus d i v i acting on the density. Uh, so we have time evolution generator. So this is what, you know, it's just like we already gotten used in Lie algebra, we have a group element, we have a generator. In the Jacobian evolution, of the neighborhoods. We have the matrix of velocity gradients, which is like this one. And we have to integrate over it to get a total effect. And that is minus dv. You, know, you can write it in various ways, but you can write it in this way. And it's explicitly, you can see why it's an operator, because there is I've just divided this way so you can see that this operator, this gradient works on the function, made it very explicit. And the reason I made it ex very explicit is, first thing, you know, you might be a, an educated person and you know about Louisville operators. They're defined for symplectic structures for Hamiltonian systems, a special case of this. So you can check that this is Louisville operator, there's a section on that in the book. Second, you could say, well, well but I know that evolution is generated by Hamiltonians, I know it's from quantum mechanics. Well, it's not. This is the operator. It's not a Hamiltonian. So that might be educational. And uh, once you have this, there is also a formal relation, which you always have to you know, define in terms of time order evolution, etc. You can also say, well, the finite evolution is really an integral over infinitesimal evolution. But it's not Hamiltonian. It's linear operators, it's dynamics. Sometimes dynamics is described by Hamiltonian equations. In that case, you have something called Louisville phase space evolution, and it's not quantum mechanics, just so you don't get confused.